and bear down. You get to decide what kind of king you are going to be. Well, Marvel's Black Panther broke numerous box office records, becoming the highest grossing film directed by a black filmmaker and the ninth highest grossing film of all time. It was the first superhero movie to receive a Best Picture nomination in 2018, and costume designer Ruthie Carter won her first Oscar for that film. Talk about um, meeting the challenge of building costumes for Black Panther, the first movie and the second movie. Yes, well, I had never done a superhero film before, so I thought, why me? You know, why did they uh, select me to be their costume designer? And I went over to Marvel, and you know, you have to get an eye scan and a photo of your. It's like walking into the CIA. You know, door slammed behind you. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but I did go over to Marvel to meet up with Ryan Coogler and Nate Moore and uh, to interview for Black Panther. And I thought, you know what, why me? And, and uh, as I met this young 31-year-old filmmaker, Ryan Coogler, it reminded me of a young Spike Lee. And he grew up watching my films. And he said, I'm so, I'm so happy to see you here. I was a young boy when Malcolm X came out. And I remember it was a big family celebration in the movie theater. And everyone in the neighborhoods were all coming together and I sat on my dad's lap and I remembered the costumes and I thought wow you know I kind of interviewed for Black Panther when he was a young boy in, mm. in a sense um, but we had some of this we had collected some of the same images of Afro future and the, there was a there was a kinship uh, immediately there was a kinship and Ruth, so and, you know, I, I, I in both there. of those movies um, the thing uh, that spoke to me was the mm -hmm. beauty and elegance and regalness uh, mm -hmm. of how you dressed the women. Angela mm -hmm. Bassett. I am queen of the most powerful nation in the world. Yes. Beautiful. The yes. Dora Milaje, those yes. beautiful yes. warrior mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. Talk about your inspiration for how you created those looks. Well, you know, I, I knew um, that Angela um, has said she's always wanted to play a queen. And, you know, um, I, I, you get that sense from her when you, you know, see how she delivers her, her lines. I mean, from the Yale School of Drama, she's a trained actress. And, you know, with a person like her, with an actress like her, uh, we, the more you prepare, she meets you, you know, she can meet you she can she can supersede you so you have to prepare and um in the first film in black panther one she sat uh, beside t'challa she was the queen of wakanda and the in wakanda forever she, uh, we lost we lost our king and she took on the mantle of the ruler and so she needed to uh, we needed to elevate her look from the first film to the second and we gave her stronger colors more more metallics more metals we added a, another piece to her crown, her Ishikolo. Um, we transferred the big shoulder mantle she wore in the first film to a collar, a beautiful collar. When you see her enter the Geneva UN, you know she is not only the queen of Wakanda, she is the ruler. Mm. And, uh, and so it's wonderful to to create storytelling in that way when you have actors who know how to wear it. Mm. I had a chance to uh, interview Lapita during the first movie, and I remember oh. seeing photographs of you all walking through the African markets, looking mm -hmm. at the fabrics, yeah. looking at what the women uh, were wearing as part of your inspiration. Yes, it was. Um, we are we're creating Wakanda, which is a fictitious place. You know, there's no Wakanda. You know that, right? No, uh, I, I didn't know that. I, sure I thought it was for there's... real. No, no, there's no, you can't take a, a bus or a train there. I'm okay. sorry to tell you. <laughs> but <laughs> we were creating uh, Wakanda as this place that happened before colonization. So we were very careful about all of the things that we purchased and picked. And we really wanted to be as authentic as possible. And I had shoppers all over the continent of Africa to send me uh, antiques, to send me original pieces so I could examine the color and I could see how the Himba women used that clay soil and shea butter and mixed it and put it on their 
skin and in their hair. I wanted to really like understand it and not use just my research from the photo collections um, or uh, use something that is, was made in China, you know? So I made sure that we came from an authentic point of view. Mm -hmm. Talk more if you would about uh, the, the journey and the advice you are giving to others who want to follow in your footsteps. Yes, I think that it's very important that you study. Uh, you study. You you remain a student of your passion. That you don't stop. Uh, sometimes we stumble and we uh, we get afraid. We doubt ourselves, and you know that's all a part of the journey. You really do have to. Um, push through those emotions, you know, almost kind of like, don't worry, you talk to yourself and you say, you know, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to learn something from this fear or from this stumble. There's a lesson to be learned and don't be afraid to ask for help. A lot of times we are so afraid that someone's going to, you know, call us out and say, we're not good enough or we didn't do it right but you know don't be afraid to ha ask for help when you look at something and it's not quite what you want it to be you can consult with all kinds of people just think about who you'd like to ask who would be the ultimate person you would ask a question and go ask them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and you're not going to be Ruth Carter two-time Oscar winner two-time Oscar nominee overnight you have to put the work in no, yes, nothing happens like Instagram, you know, everything on Instagram makes us feel like we can just tomorrow be the next uh, sensation and you do have to put in the work. Now, uh, we said at the top of the segment, talked about you being from Springfield, Massachusetts. Yes. When were you hey, here visiting last? Yeah. I was visiting? just there. I was just there. I'm, you know, keeping up my mom's house. You know, she passed in March, mm -hmm. and um, I do still have brothers and sisters there that I like to visit and go there for holidays. But you know, it. You know, I'm just a Springfield girl, and I like to go home. You like to go home. Well, thank you for coming home to talk to us about your thank great you. success uh, and your book. It's been uh, just uh, marvelous to watch your career thrive and grow. Ruth Carter, thank you for joining us. The book is called The Art of Ruth E. Carter, and it is available now.